Scheduling tasks using AWS Lambda is useful for automating repetitive and time-based operations. Some common examples include data backup, report generation, application maintenance, data cleanup, etc. With Lambda's scheduler, you can specify when and how often a function should be run. This means you can easily set up daily, weekly, monthly, or even cron-like jobs. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos around .NET, Cloud, and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. Without much delay, let's learn all about scheduling tasks using AWS Lambda functions. Amazon EventBridge offers the Amazon EventBridge scheduler, which is a serverless scheduler that allows us to create, run, and manage tasks from a central place. EventBridge Scheduler is highly customizable and offers improved scalability. We can use the EventBridge Scheduler to schedule Lambda functions. So let's see how we can do that. So let's switch over to Visual Studio and create a new Lambda function. Here I have a default empty Lambda function template already created, which has the function.cs and also the default AWS Lambda tools JSON file. Now, if you're completely new to Lambda functions, I highly recommend checking out my getting started with Lambda functions video, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. Now to work with the Amazon event bridge events in AWS Lambda, we need to add a NuGet package. So let's right click on the project and say manage NuGet packages. Inside here, let's go to browse and search for Lambda CloudWatch events. Now this is the old name for these events, which is why the library is still named that way. So let's select this and install this in our project. Now once installed, we can switch back to the function and instead of using the string input, we can start using one of the events from this NuGet package. That is the scheduled event class. So let's replace this and take in a scheduled event class, which comes from the NuGet package that we just added. Now, since this is a background job, you might not need much data input for this functions. However, there are ways you can do that as well, which we will see later in this video. Now, inside this function, you might choose to do any of your repetitive tasks like creating a report or sending notification emails or data cleanup, etc. So let's for now simply return a value. However, you would be replacing this with your appropriate business logic. So let's simply say upper. Let's also log this inside the CloudWatch so we know some details about this event. So let's say right line scheduled task run with the input. So let's JSON serialize this. So let's make sure to use string interpolation, JSON serializer dot serialize and pass in the whole input class. So let's pass in that. Let's make sure to close this bracket and we have the console.write line. So let's build this and let's deploy this to a Lambda function. For that, let's right click on the project again and say publish to AWS Lambda, which prompts up this dialog. So let's name this as Lambda Scheduler, click next. Let's make sure to give the appropriate role. So in this case, I'll give AWS Lambda basic execution role and let's click upload. Now this uploads this function into our AWS Lambda. I have my local environment set up so that it can easily connect to my AWS account. I talk about this in the connecting to the AWS account video, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. Let's navigate over to the browser and go to the AWS console under Lambda functions. Here we have the Lambda scheduler function, which we just deployed. Now let's say we want to run this function every minute so that it does the job that it's supposed to do periodically on the schedule. Now this could be in every minute or 30 minutes, 60 minutes, etc. To set up a trigger, so let's go into the configuration. Under triggers, let's click add trigger. Inside here, we can search for event bridge and select that. Now you can see here the name is event bridge and the old name CloudWatch events. So let's select that. Let's say create a new rule and create a rule name. So let's call this as every minute report. And this is simply runs every minute. So let's set up a schedule expression. In this case, there are multiple ways you can set up a schedule expression. To see some examples, you can select this link and navigate to that. So let's first use the rate expression. So let's navigate to the rate expressions on the left and you can see the syntax for that. Now, rate expression starts when you create the scheduled event rule and it runs on a defined schedule. Now, the rate expressions are like rate, 
bracket the value and a unit. Now the value is going to be a positive number and the unit is the unit of time, which can be minute, minutes, hour or days. So let's go back and say rate of one minute. So let's come back here. Let's specify rate one minute and let's add this. Now this is going to add a new trigger in the event bridge or CloudWatch events, which is going to trigger this Lambda function. Now this says it's enabled. Now if I navigate to the monitor tab and go to the CloudWatch logs, in one minute, this function should be invoked. Now you can see there is already an invocation happening. So let's navigate to that instance log. And you can see here the console.log, which is scheduled task run with that info. So if we expand this, you can see all the information from that particular object that we logged. So it has the region, the detail, the scheduled event, and also the resources, which is the every minute report that we just created as the rule. Now, if you wait for one more minute, you will be able to see an additional log statement. If we navigate back to the Lambda function, go into the configuration and triggers, you can navigate to this one minute rule that we just created. So let's click this and it navigates to the Amazon event bridge and you can see the rule inside there. Now, if I navigate into rules, you can see all the other rules that I have created on my AWS account. So let's go to the every minute report that we just created and you can see the details of that as well. Now, this is the ARN of this rule, which we just saw in the logs. Now, if you want to edit this particular rule, you can click edit and also change the information here. So you can see here, there is a defined schedule which sets it up to run every minute. There's also the target, which has the AWS service, Lambda function and our Lambda scheduler function that we just created. You can also have additional configurations inside this. And you can configure tags and also update this information once you have made changes. Now, if I switch back to the CloudWatch console, you can refresh this and you can see there is one more time that this is run. So you can see the time difference between these two invocations. So there is a scheduled task run here and also a scheduled task run on this line, which is basically one minute apart. So you can see these two lines. One of this is at 4.45 and the other one was at 4.44. Now this is going to keep continuing until that rule is complete or is deleted. Now when we build this function, we saw that we had to change this from the string input to a scheduled event. But this Lambda function is now highly specific for a scheduled event trigger. You cannot use this from other Lambda functions. So let's say we want to reuse this and make sure that the input comes in a format that we expect. Let's say we want some string input or an identifier coming in as the function parameter so that we can use this inside our Lambda function. Maybe it's a department code, a country code, or something similar based on your application domain, which can be used in the reports or the background task job that we are performing here. So let's comment this line out so that we have a reference for this and let's create a new function line. So let's keep this as public handler and let's make this as string input. So in this case, we can simply log the input without doing any JSON serialization and write this to the input line. So let's remove this additional bracket and let's also return this upper source. Now this is simply for demo purposes. You would be actually writing your business domain logic inside here. So let's build this and let's publish this again to Lambda function. So let's say publish and click upload. Now the next time the trigger is going to run, it's going to fail because it's trying to match a JSON input into a string. However, we'll need to configure the rule so that it doesn't fail. So if I navigate back to the logs for the Lambda, you can see there is a new log stream record. So let's navigate into here and you can see now there is a system JSON serialization exception because it's trying to convert a JSON object into a string representation. So let's navigate back to the rule and let's come back to the edit rule and go to the select targets. So let's expand the additional settings. And inside here, you can see the configure target input. Right now we have as matched events, which means it is going to send the exact event info as the event parameter. Now we can change this and choose a different option for this. You can use part of a matched event or a constant JSON text, or even you can write an input transformer. So let's select the constant JSON text for now and let's simply say hello as a string. So this gets converted as a string in our Lambda function. So let's click next and next again and let's say update rule. 
Now the next time this rule is going to run, it's going to pass hello as a text into your Lambda function. Now this could be a specific identifier value for which or a list of ID values, or you can even plug this to other AWS services, which we will see in a different video. So let's come back to the CloudWatch logs. So let's refresh this logs here. Let's navigate into one of those. The Lambda function has run again. So here you can see that it is logging schedule task run with hello, which is the text that we have configured inside our event bridge rule. Now we no longer get the JSON exception. So you can use this however you want to map the input from the rule into your Lambda function. You can also provide a JSON object inside here if required. Now, if you want to disable this rule, you can go back to the triggers, you can select this, and you can either delete this, or you can temporarily disable this rule. For that, you will need to come to the actual rule here, go into the rule detail, and select disable. This is going to disable this particular rule until you come back and enable it again. You can also delete this rule from here. Rate expressions allow you to specify how often you need a Lambda function to be run. However, when you want more fine-grained control on when and how to run a Lambda function, you will not be able to use rate expressions. In these cases, you can use cron expressions. Now, cron expressions you might be very familiar with allows you to specify different variants and also specify exact day and time of the week to run the jobs. So in these cases, when you want to specify when and how, you can use cron expressions. Even bridge cron expression have six required fields. Now this represents minutes, hours, day of month, the month, day of week, and also the year. You can look at some of the wildcards that the cron expressions accepts and the information about that in this documentation here. You can also scroll down to see a few examples of the cron expressions that you can use. Now you can run at 10 a.m. UTC every day. You can run every 15 minutes, which is very similar to what we used with rate. In this case, what we're specifying is zero by 15 and specifying star for all the other one, except for day of week, because you have already specified day of month. You can also specify something very specific as run every five minutes, Monday through Friday between eight and 5 p.m. UTC time. Let's say we want a job to be run every minute between morning four o'clock and six o'clock. So let's come back to our Lambda scheduler. Let's create a new rule. So let's say add trigger. Let's select the event bridge trigger. So let's select that. And let's say a create a new rule and let's specify every Monday. So let's come into rule description and specify every Monday morning between four to six. Now you can specify a schedule expression here. So let's copy and paste one of the cron expressions that I have already created. So this is going to have zero by one, which is going to say every minute. It's saying four and five. So let's make that as four to six so that it's four to six a.m. And we have specified question mark for the day of month because this is not being specified here. And for the next value, we are specifying the star, which is basically the month, which means every month we need to run that. And we are also specifying the day of week as Monday and Tuesday. But in this case, you can also specify just Monday if you want. And we are specifying the star, which represents the year. That means it's going to run every year. So let's come back here and let's click add. Now this is going to set this up on UTC time because all the cron expressions is by default inferred as UTC time. So if you go to the rule that we just created, let's say every morning, and here you can see the cron expression. And also the good thing is you can see the next 10 trigger dates. So in this case, it's going to trigger on 30th of October four on UTC. Now, if I select to local time zone, it's going to say 2 p.m. Now, I don't want to wait till that time to show you how this works. So let me go and edit this and change this to a time that aligns with my particular schedule. So let's look at what the UTC time right now is, which is at 7 p.m. and it's on 29th of October, which is a Sunday. And let's specify Sunday to Monday. So that's going to run both on Sunday and Monday. And let's also specify this as 7 p.m., which is going to be 19. So let's change this and let's say 18 to 20. So it's going to run sometime right now. So now it's going to next run at the UTC time 1901. So let's switch this to local time zone. And you can see this is going to run at five o'clock right here in Brisbane. So let's click next and let's click next again and let's click update rule. 
Now since our lambda function is still taking a string input, I'll have to come back and make sure to update the rule so that it passes in a string input as well. So let's come back to the new rule that we just created. Let's edit this. Let's go into the select targets. Let's select advanced and let's specify a new string in here. So let's say a constant text and let's say this is a Sunday, Monday report and let's click next next and update the rule. Now the next time it's going to run, it's going to get that text. So let's go into the CloudWatch. Let's refresh this. Now you can see there's already a record where we have the error for JSON serialization. This is because it was trying to deserialize it, the JSON string, which was the actual CloudWatch scheduled event into a string. However, the next run should fix that. You can see this has run again. And here we have the scheduled task run with Sunday, Monday report. Now, in this case, we've successfully set up a cron schedule on our Lambda function and it invokes based on that schedule. The good thing with the cron schedule set up in here is that you can actually see the next 10 triggers so you can make sure that your cron expression is as expected. I hope this helps you to understand how to set up Lambda functions on a scheduled trigger and use this to perform different functions for your business purposes. We saw how to use rate expressions to simply specify a fixed rate time like day, week, month, etc. Or we can use advanced cron expressions to set up and drill down into exactly when and how the function should be run. We saw different ways we can bind the function input, which was using a string or even the scheduled event, which is the basic event that comes from the CloudWatch or the Amazon event bridge events. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit the subscribe button. This also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.